Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good week. Looking forward to the weekend. I know I certainly am. But before we jump into the video, I want to do a huge shout out to all of you people who have followed me for all these years and you new guys that have popped up as well. Really, really do appreciate your comments, your likes and just purely watching the video. It's really awesome to see that someone or some people are interested in what I've got to build. <laughs> and we did have a lot of amazing and nice comments as well. I can't list them all on today's video but we had some really nice comments a lot of you guys who have been following from the very early days as well Derek Small for example I've seen you around for a long long time and not forgetting Chrysler as well he has been around since pretty much day one which is really cool to see now we also had a nice comment here from Aggie Boy who mentioned about putting in some parks underneath the amusement buildings to attract more people now we did actually do this I'm not sure if I called it on camera but um, I have been adding in some of the, uh, the generators in the actual apart the actual buildings themselves to try and generate more people because the buildings themselves don't tend to do that. I did actually add some of the um, houses in there as well to try and get a lot more people in the area. But if you weren't aware of that, as Aggie Boy says, that's a really good way of getting more people to your area. I also did ask you guys for your comments on how you create your car parking areas and Andrew Parker has got a good few little ideas here. One of them is actually including a toilet block which um, is very interesting and that's actually something that I have done here as you can see on screen and it does actually bring a lot more people in. But I do like the idea of adding the height restriction barriers, ticket machines and all those final details really do bring to life these car parks. As always guys, huge thank you for everyone who comments on these videos. Like I said, I'll try and read out the best of the best during each video. So please let me know your thoughts and feelings on the series so far. So what are we working on today? Well, we're gonna of course carry on this beautiful beachfront and we're gonna work on another area that's quite dominant when you're looking at these beautiful UK beach areas and that's a restaurant and sort of a shop area front. So a lot of these beach fronts you'll see have many, many restaurants, obviously taking full advantage of the people that are visiting, but also taking advantage of the beautiful views that you have when you're eating your lovely meal. So we're going to work on some little restaurants. We're going to add in some shops as well. We're going to really try and make it a bit more of a commercial attraction at this front now, which um, I think will really make things look a lot different. And we have, again, copied the almost like theme layout of the Shanklin beachfront as well here. Um, so we're going to just try our best to make it all blend in and uh, look nice. So the first issue to combat for myself was there's not a huge amount of uh, what I would class as beachfront restaurants, certainly not with a UK feel to it. So I had to try and work a way around of creating that feel, that vibe with the amazing assets that we do have to play with on the workshop. So it was difficult to really pinpoint the ones that suited. There are some nice restaurants that we can get away with placing down. You'll see that a bit later on in the video. But for this particular area, I wanted this to be the main sort of attraction, the nicest restaurant area um, on the beachfront. And the way that I thought to do this best was to carry on using these um these well they're not hotels but they're kind of like apartment buildings which we've used already in the video um last week for the uh the hotel look so i thought that was the best way of doing so we had to do a bit of po work as you can see here to hide some of the uh the steps to make it not look so much like a um a house <laughs> um and we've used these uh these doors as well from the workshop and put them in made them a little bit bigger um, to prop those in and you'll see as well the referencing of the the building itself here was a little bit larger than what it should have been um, like I said these buildings were made very early doors in terms of the city skylines uh, asset and building creation community so we did descale it down a little bit and um, use the doors and the prop there of the person to to create the reference point to make sure they are in line with what it should be it's no point having a building that's too big it will just look silly so that is that and this is how we're going to try and recreate the look of a nice 
restaurant area. So I wanted to try and make it in a sort of a two tier factor. Um, so the hotel's a little bit higher than perhaps the bottom half um, of the seating area. Um, have a big large area as well also to really make it look like there's a sort of a bar or uh, you know a little seating area for when you're walking past you don't have to go for a main meal you can just grab yourself a nice little drink and sit by the seafront um, and really take in the views and um, the atmosphere of the area so this is obviously not going to be a functional walking area as you can tell because we're using some um, platform props here and also we're using the network um, terraform tool as well to force the ground down it's not going to be a true um a true bit of ground that allows people to walk along it and upstairs etc i mean we could have done that but it would have taken a very long time to use the invisible pathways etc um one thing here you'll see i've not actually used these tables before i don't think and the fact we now also have the seated sim props really can we can really make this area come to life now really really cool i'm really happy with the uh the detail of these tables as well i mean look at them you've got the tablecloth you've got the bottles of wine on there and some plates it just looks really really nice and detailed and it fits this area perfectly this is the sort of restaurant i'm trying to make or trying to get the vibe of um i wanted to make it look a little bit fancy um, but not you know not outrageously fancy because again this is a a restaurant on the seafront you're not going to have you know the ritz or anything over the top there are you but we still need to make it look realistic so we are adding in some uh, staircases here to um, make it look proper <laughs> i guess Also, I don't know if it's just me, but these cobbled walls are, always remind me of the seaside. Really, really do, especially obviously in the UK. Um, they always do give that vibe of a, a sort of a UK seafront feel, which is why I went for those particular walls. We could have obviously made it a lot cleaner and gone for a different type of wall, but I think it works quite nicely combined together here. Um, and I also wanted to add in some of these awnings and some uh, of the uh, beautiful umbrellas to give a little bit of variance between the two areas um, unfortunately in the uk we do have a lot of rain so it's quite often that there will be some sort of a, a um i was going to say shaded area but we obviously do get a bit of sunshine so the shaded area does work but if it also works as a preventative of rain then result is <laughs> pretty much spot on um and you'll also notice as well next door we uh, put this little cafe in here and if i remember correctly this actual restaurant we're trying to recreate does actually have this little cafe beside it so i wanted to try and separate the two so we've got the restaurant here and perhaps the little um building on the side here perhaps that's like an italian little coffee coffee shop or something you know something along those lines to keep with the italian vibe of what this restaurant is here which we've named as luigi's pizzeria i thought it'd be nice a nice way of adding the two together there um, and pretty much now just detailing this area I really think that this is starting to come alive and I don't know about you guys but just adding in these little details of the people sitting at the table I know they're not walking or moving around but it really does add to the vibe of when you're building um, in city skylines let me know what you do to make your cities come to life what ideas do you have drop them in the comment section below and share your advice with me and everyone else watching this video not only that, but do also let me know if you are a resident or you visited the Isle of Wight because we've had a lot of comments again recently whereas people have been saying that they've come to the area, they remember the golf course, it looks so like the real thing. It is so amazing to see that people have seen the video from YouTube um, 
and found us. You know, we are just recreating a location I really enjoy going to. And the fact that people from the island are actually seeing this is absolutely incredible. Really, really happy. So if you are a resident of the Isle of Wight, let me know where you're from. Let me know how long you've been watching the video. I'll be really pleased to hear from you guys. For those of you who have been following the channel for quite some time, you'll know that recently we have been looking at the opportunity to allow you guys to build something for the series. Now I decided on a farmhouse because it's a relatively small build and quite easy for me to deploy on the island. And well, I wanted to get you guys involved in the series a little bit more. So if you are interested in building something like this, check out the description details below on how you can do so. This week we have a submission from Jacob. Now Jacob has put together this really, really cool farmhouse. Perfect in terms of its size and just look at the detail before we even zoom in. The attention to detail here is astonishing, it really is. I love the layout, you've got the central house, you've got some sheds on the side, you've got a, a little bit of a scrappy area in the corner there with the uh, the caravan and some of the, uh, the tools etc. You've got the shed with the uh, machinery in as well. And these puddles, I don't think I've used these puddles enough. These puddle decals are exceptional. They look so good in the game and they are working so well with this particular build. I also like the fact that he's gone into quite a lot of detail here in terms of the actual farmhouse itself with a little football pitch there, some chairs around the table and a little barbecue in the corner. All in all, this is an absolutely amazing build. Thank you very much, Jacob, for your submission. I am so pleased to have put this down on the Isle of Wight. Next up, I know I am trying to avoid building like I did in Monaco, but we've got a bit of a slope to deal with just here. And what better way of doing so than placing some terraced houses. Terraced houses are so much easier to place on a steep hill or steepish hill as this case may be. I found by using these smaller buildings, in this instance, the terraced houses, which are only two by two, I think, in terms of the footprint of the grid, you can get away with raising them up a lot higher than you could do with a larger building with a much wider footprint. The reason, obviously, because there's not as much to raise up. Um, these houses that I'm using in particular, these terrace houses, are a lot more forgiving with raising up because of how they've been modelled, which works out really well. But if you're trying to deal with slopes with large buildings, I would suggest looking for some more slimmer buildings and place those down because they do really help when you're trying to navigate the hilly terrain compounds um, of, a, of a location. And at the end of the day, when you're building on some sort of a terrain, it looks so much more realistic. If you're building purely on a flat level plane, obviously they do look beautiful. You can really get away with playing the game in a very different way than uh, if you're dealing with a lot of terrain changes. But in my opinion, personally, I like to build on unique terrains just to make it look a lot more realistic and not only that but these terrace houses work perfectly for a UK theme so all in all it worked out really well for me so really happy with that find and um, yeah it all worked out as planned for once it doesn't always happen that way I know a lot of you will probably be feeling the same sometimes you find a building that you plop down and it works perfectly well in your mind and then you end up scrolling through the other hundreds and thousands of assets you've got and you pick out one that works slightly better. So never never fear if you're building something that doesn't quite look that good. You can always go back to stuff and amend it or work around it. And remember, there's never a reason why a build in City Skylines is wrong. You're building your own creativity, the flair of inspiration that's inside your mindset. So just go with it, just go with the flow, build, 
and really get yourself involved. Because I think that's one thing I hear a lot in the community is people struggling to get going in a build. And I can completely understand that. I had that stumbling block when I first started playing the game where I just didn't know how to begin. Um, I started working with road networks and trying to think of a way of engaging some creativity with a layout of a road. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. And you need to try a few other techniques to really get your mindset going. And one thing I would highly recommend is if you are really, really stuck, jump into Google Maps just find a location nearby to you that you've physically seen by walking around and look at the map in a google map perspective have a look at it see how it all works obviously you've got the vision of what it looks like in first person walking around the area and use both of the ideas and concepts to firstly get down some sort of a layout and then use both the google maps and your own vision of what the area looks like and just detail it and see how it works that way you really learn how certain areas are built up and how things function. And if things function correctly as they would do in a day-to-day -day location, they will look realistic. It's a fact, it's the way, the way it works. The way we see things looking realistic is because it paints a picture, paints a story of what is the norm for that area. So give it a go and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below how you get over that stumbling block. Next up, you'll see we are putting down some sheds. You may think that's a strange thing to see, but it's very, very common in the UK. You'll tend to see these little sheds or shacks or whatever you want to class them at, basically along the beachfront. And they have normally two purposes. One is they are fishing huts for people to store their fishing equipment, or more commonly that I am aware of, is they are on the beachfront and you would basically hire or you would own one of these little sheds and you would just put your belongings in there. Maybe you have got a, a paddle board or a kayak that you want to store when you're over here and you'll just plop it in there, leave it there and that's it, it's nice and safe. Alternately, you could also use these as an actual outbuilding for you to enjoy the sun in. Um, whether you're sitting inside and you've got your food in there etc or you are just using it to um, accommodate your possessions either way they are both very common to see on a beachfront and again you'll see we took full advantage of the uh, move it tool to allow you to change the colors because typically you would see these sheds in really nice bright beautiful colors they wouldn't just be wooden sheds people do paint them to make them look more seasidey and you know your own your own shed etc etc and that pretty much brings us to the end of this episode and in fact we've almost completed the seafront now all that's left to do really is next episode we'll be working on detailing the main strip so detailing the beach and the sort of paths and roads alongside it so make sure you stick around and follow the channel if you're not already let me know your thoughts and comments on how well you think this particular build went. Anything you would add or do differently, I'm always welcoming those comments. Other than that, guys, have yourself a very good weekend and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.